Good morning, LifePoint family. Thanks so much for joining us for our online service. You know, today is Mother's Day. Hopefully that does not come as a surprise to you. If it does, right after this service, you're going to want to get on that. You definitely don't want to disappoint mom. We just want to take a minute, though, for real, to, to just wish all the moms out there and all the women in our lives who have served as mothers to us, we want to wish you all a happy Mother's Day. We really hope it's a great day for you. You know, being a mom is not for the faint of heart. It's a difficult job. And we recognize, especially in this season, that there's so many added responsibilities and challenges and just things that have been kind of piled up on your plate as moms. And so uh, we just want to say thank you and, and honor you and acknowledge all that you do for us to care for us and to provide for us. We also recognize that today can be a hard day for so many people. Perhaps you have a desire to be a mom, but that desire has yet to be fulfilled or you're missing your mom this year or the relationship that you have with your mom isn't what you want it to be. Uh, and so please know that we, we recognize and acknowledge the heartache and fear and anxiety, anxiety that you may be feeling as a result of this. But, but we also know that we have a God who knows our heart and he meets us right where we're at. And that's just one of the many reasons that we have to praise and thank him. Before we get underway, we just want to encourage you as well to take a minute during this morning, during the service, to fill out a connection card. It's a great way for you to let us know what's going on in your life. And so whether you've been coming to LifePoint for years and years, or this is your very first time with us, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to connect with you. The connection card is a great way uh, for you to let us know not only what's going on in your life, but any next steps that you're looking to take in your relationship with God, we'd be happy to follow up with you on that. You can click the link above this video or text the word connecting to 94000. And then we'd also encourage you to submit a prayer request. You can do that by clicking on the live prayer button if you're watching on our website, or you can uh, submit a request by emailing you at lifepoint.org. Now let's turn it over to Pastor Trevor and the team as they lead us in worship. Jesus. 
come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Jesus is waiting, God so loved the world. Amen. This next song has lyrics that talk about God fighting for us and that we're not alone. And I think in this season, it's really easy to feel like we are alone and that a fight depends on our own efforts and, and our own abilities. But I just hope that the words of the song can just sink right into your soul this morning and that uh, you not only think about God being the one who's fighting, but that you believe it and that you rest in him as he fights for you. song that we just sang is such a timely 
reminder for us. We sang the line, we are not alone. We are not alone. However, I know that there's so many people, especially during this season, who, who do feel alone. They're lonely. They're feeling isolated. And I think extroverts everywhere are probably having a hard time with what's going on right now. But despite our circumstances, the truth remains that we are not alone. God is with us. And we simply need to pray the prayer from that the line of the chorus, that same one that we just sang. It's, it's God, open up our eyes. Surround us with your light. Essentially playing, praying, God, remind us that you're here. Remind us that you are with us and that we are not alone. And so I hope that our time of worship was, was an encouragement to you this morning. We're going to dive into the message in just a minute, but before we do, I have a, some important information to share with you. First, to all the guys out there, both young and old alike, we have an awesome event coming up that's being hosted by our men's ministry on Saturday morning, May 23rd. you got to set some time aside from 8.30 to 9.30-ish or so. We're going to be sitting down with the second baseman from the San Francisco Giants, the current second baseman, Mauricio Dubon, and we're going to get to interview him and hear his story about how he grew up in Honduras and made his way to the big leagues. Uh, Mauricio has a connection to a family here at LifePoint, and so you're going to get to hear about that connection and just what life is like for a big leaguer. We're also going to be uh, raffling off a, a signed baseball for all of the attendees. And so I really hope that you register for this event. You can do so on our website. You can also text the word big league to 94000. That's probably the easiest way to have friends and family uh, register for this event as well. It's an easy invite. And so we hope that you'll take advantage of that opportunity to invite guys to join us for that event on Saturday, May 23rd. You know, at LifePoint, we talk about giving in three primary ways, giving our time, giving our talents, and giving our treasure. And so many of you have been giving your time and talent, uh, not only during this season, but even uh, adding more time and, and using your talents to serve while everything is going on right now. And we really, really appreciate that. Uh, if you're a part of the LifePoint family, we also want to give you an opportunity to continue your worship by giving through your treasure and offering. And so there's going to be a few ways to do that. Those will be on the screen. And again, we just thank you for giving in that way. Your continued generosity allows us to fuel the ministry that's going on here at LifePoint. Also, before we dive into the message, we want to make sure that you're aware of all of the resources that are available to you. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, you can find those resources at live.lifepoint.org. If you're already there, you can find those resources at the top right of the page. Be sure to check out the notes section on the right. There's a bunch of other helpful links. And if you continue to scroll down, you'll find some of the sermon notes that we'll be referencing this morning. And then you can always uh, follow along with us on the YouVersion Bible app. Uh, you can add your own notes in there. And then the sermon notes are already plugged in for you. It's a great way to keep track uh, with us this morning as we go through the message. Before we dive in, let's check this out. Happy Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day! Mom, Mom is the best way she gave me a banana. Happy Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day, Happy Mother's Day. Happy Happy Mother's Day Mom. Mom! Just wanted to say thank you for all the little things and all the big things that you do for us and for always inviting us to spend some time with you. Hi Mom, thanks for giving birth to me. Happy Mother's Day, love you! One thing I love about my mom is that she never lets me give up. Happy Mother's Day! Thanks for being our teacher. Thanks for being our best mom. We love you. Hi, Mom. I love you. Happy Mother's Day. Hi, Mom. I love you. Happy Mother's Day. I love Mommy because she gives us second chances. I like to draw and paint with Mommy. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. I love you. Modern Mother's Day. I love you. Thank you, Mom, for being the most supporting, loving, and forgiving person that I know. Happy, Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you. you. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. We love you. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. 
love you. We love you, Mommy. Happy Mother's Day. Our mom is the best because not only does she provide for us for our everyday needs, but she gave birth to us and is probably the kindest person on earth. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. We love you. Happy Mother's Day. We love you. I love my mom because she's always supportive no matter what. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you. I love you. I love you. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. We love you. Thank you for everything you've done. You're the best. Mwah. I love you. It's Mother's Day. Bye. Love you, Love you too. So thankful to have you um, as a mom and the awesome gardener that you have become. Thanks for just being mom. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. You're the best mom ever. And you're the best mom I ever could have. Thank you so much. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you and goodbye. Booyah. Oh, that was so, so great. Thanks, kids. And let me echo your sentiment and by saying happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers out there. You know, I, I know this. If no one's watching my sermons online, I can know this. Every week, my mom's watching the sermons. So, Mom, happy Mother's Day. I love you. You know, Mother's Day is normally a day when moms, you know, you all want to be together with your family and just have, have a time together, especially uh, um, with what's been going on lately and being stuck at home the last two months. I imagine that some of you are thinking, this is the first time ever, I don't really want to be with my family. I want them to leave and let me be home alone and have a little alone time. In fact, my, my, my wife, Heather, this week, she uh, came to me and she said, hey honey can you uh, 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 maybe go to work uh, this week and work from work and uh, since no one's there and I'm thinking to myself are you kicking me out well babe I as you know I decided to give you a week-long Mother's Day uh, present this week and so I came down to work and worked here at the church all week so babe happy Mother's Day love you too and uh, I'll be back at home this next week actually you and I can all relate in some way, shape, or form to just kind of being stuck, right? To kind of being in a position where we're feeling cooped up and we're all right now stuck in some capacity due to this shutdown. And the question that we're asking in this series is how do you act? How do you react when you are in difficult circumstances, when you're stuck in your circumstances? What attitude should you have? And the Apostle Paul, he was also stuck, and he was stuck in prison awaiting a possible execution. And yet, even though he was stuck in his circumstances, the Apostle Paul wasn't stuck in his attitude. He had an attitude that I think we all want. He had this incredible joy. He was filled with joy. He was happy. And Paul's attitude and Paul's response to hard circumstances made me think about a quote I recently heard from Akbar Bajabia Mia. Now, who's Akbar Bajabia Mia? He is a former NFL player and the co-host of American Ninja Warrior. And Akbar, who's Nigerian and one of seven children who grew up in, and this is quoting him, grew up in the hood of Los Angeles. Man, his circumstances were rough growing up. And in fact, one time he had a gun pointed at his head and he literally believed he was going to die. Now, he said this of his circumstances. He said this. He said, I wanted to change my life. I didn't want the circumstances around me to dictate my future. You can take your circumstances and disregard and reject it. Don't use it as a tool to make excuses but use it for something that will propel you forward. Akbar was stuck in his circumstances growing up, but he wasn't stuck in his attitude. And so Akbar used his circumstances to propel him forward. You know, the Apostle Paul had a very, very similar attitude. While stuck in prison, chained to a Roman guard, and uh, he didn't make any excuses. Paul rejected his circumstances as a tool to, you know, make excuses. 
And instead, Paul chose to use those to move him forward, to propel him forward, more specifically, to move forward and propel forward the gospel. He used his circumstances as an opportunity to share Christ with all the guards he was chained to. Ultimately, we, we, we discover that everybody knew he was in chains because of Jesus, and ultimately, even people in Caesar's very own household came to faith in Jesus Christ because of Paul's sharing the gospel. And while Paul was uh, chained to these soldiers, Paul wrote these words to the Philippians, and I want to read this together in Philippians chapter 4. We're going to start in verse 4. He said this, Paul said, Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, he said, Rejoice in the Lord when you get out of prison. Is that what he says? Rejoice in the Lord when you're not stuck at home anymore. Is that what he says? No, no, no. He says, Rejoice in the Lord when? Rejoice in the Lord. Say it out loud. Rejoice in the Lord always. In other words, in good times, rejoice. In more difficult times, rejoice. When the economy is strong, rejoice. And when the economy is not so strong, we rejoice when we're healthy. We rejoice when we're battling sickness. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. And then he says, I just want to make sure you're clear about this. And so I'll say it again. Rejoice. Rejoice. And then he said this, verse 5. He said, let your evidence, or excuse me, let your gentleness be evident to all. Because why? He says, the Lord is near. And then Paul said this in verse 6, do not be anxious about anything. I'm curious, has anybody disobeyed that command this week? I mean, anybody uh, be anxious about something this week? I I know I have. He says, don't be anxious about anything. Now, here's what I know, no matter how smart you are, no matter how much wisdom you have, no matter how wealthy you are, no matter how spiritual you are, sometimes you can still get worried, can't you? I mean, when you're watching Tiger King, okay, let's maybe, hopefully not, you're watching Tiger King, but I mean, when you're on TV and you're checking out the news, man, right now, especially right now, it can just cause worry and concern and anxiety to well up within you. And now we have this season where we're starting to open back up the country, and even California has taken its first steps. And there is this, just this sense of what if, what if, I mean, what if opening back up causes a resurgence in in, in the infection rate or even the loss of lives? I mean, maybe I should stay home. Maybe I shouldn't venture out. I mean, I I know that the virus, uh, these last two months, it hasn't been at Costco or Home Depot or the grocery stores, but I mean, it might be at the mall or it might be at the hair salon or the restaurant or the gym. But seriously, we all experience fear and panic, and anxiety. And we experience it in different ways and to varying degrees. And the Apostle Paul, who himself was stuck in his situation, he said this in verse 6. He said, do not be anxious about anything. And then he said this, but in every situation, in other words, it doesn't matter what you're facing right now. It doesn't matter what we're going through. He says in every single situation, he says this, by prayer. Type that in the chat right now. Type it in, by prayer. Say that out loud to each other. By prayer. By prayer and what? By prayer and petition. By prayer and petition. Then what does he say? With thanksgiving. So by prayer and with thanksgiving, or by prayer, another way to say it, by prayer and praise. With prayer and praise, we're going to, what does he say? We're going to present our request to God. And then Paul says this in verse 7. When we do that, he says, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. In other words, we can't necessarily explain it. We don't have the words or the, even the capacity to explain it. But he says the peace of God, God will guard. In fact, why don't you just type that in the comments right now? Will guard. Will guard. It will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Listen, when you and I pray to God and when we praise God, God gives us his peace. His peace will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. How do we get God's peace when we're stuck in our circumstances? We pray to God and we praise God. What does Paul say this peace does? What does it do? It guards. 
It guards our hearts. It guards our minds. Now, think about this. A lot of us right now, we're feeling anxious, right? I mean, there, that, that's happening. That's going on right now. There's, there's an apprehension. There's an uneasiness. Some of us might be even a little bit edgy right now, and we're not sure what's coming next or, or what's going to transpire in these next few days and weeks and months as even our country begins to open up again. We're not sure what's around the corner, and we probably feel anxious, but here's what I know that you want. Here's what I want. We feel anxious, but what we want is peace. We feel anxious, but what we want is peace. So how is it that we get the peace? How do we experience the peace of God? We pray and we praise. When we pray and we praise, we get God's peace. And that guards our hearts and minds. Now this verse, at least to me, it's fascinating when you think about Paul's circumstances. The authorities think that Paul is being guarded by a soldier every single day. But Paul isn't stuck in his circumstances because as Akbar had said earlier, he's not using it as an excuse, but he's using his circumstances as a tool to propel him forward. And because he's doing that, because Paul is using it as a cir his circumstances to propel him forward, Paul says, basically, I'm not guarded by a soldier. He's saying, I'm guarded by God's peace. I'm not guarded by a soldier. I'm guarded by God's peace. Paul's like, I I'm praying for you, Philippians. I'm praising God for you. I'm praying for these soldiers, and I'm praising God for the circumstances that I find myself in because I'm using them as a tool to propel the gospel forward. Oh, I'm guarded all right. My heart and mind are guarded by Christ Jesus. Do you want God's peace right now? Do you want the peace of God in the mix of the anxiousness and the mix of the anxiety? It's easy to be anxious with all that's going around. It's easy to have fear and anxiety and, and worry. And it can cause our hearts, it can cause our minds to just kind of freak out. But Paul says, don't be anxious about any of that stuff. None of it. Well, how? How, Paul, can I have peace? He's basically saying you've got to keep your guard up you got to keep your guard up. Now, how do I keep my guard up? By prayer and praise. And that prayer and praise is going to bring God's peace. That's how you keep your guard up. You pray to God and you praise God. Now, I want us to look together at 1 Peter chapter 5. I want us to look how Peter describes what Paul's talking about. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, Peter says it this way. He says, cast all your anxiety on him. He says, whatever you're anxious right now, cast all your anxiety onto God. Now, think about this. Peter was a fisherman, and so he is using imagery that he understands, language that he's familiar with. And so you can picture Peter right now that he's casting this net, that he's hurling this net out onto the water away from the boat to catch the fish. And so Peter is essentially saying to you and I, he's saying, I want you to toss I want you to cast that net. I want you to toss away, away from where you are and toss to God. Toss your anxiety. Toss your fears, your worries, your burdens. Toss it away from where you're at on the boat and cast it off and cast it away to God. Why? Verse 7. What does it say? Because He, God, what? He cares for you. No matter where you are right now, no matter how much you may feel stuck, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, no matter how anxious you might feel today, you need to know that God is with you. You need to know that God cares about you. You need to know that he's not going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. Peter says, because God cares about you. He cares for you. And then Peter gives this warning. He says in the next verse, verse 8, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, he says this. He says, be alert. See, that's kind of like Peter's version of keep your guard up, pray and praise. Keep your guard up, pray and praise. He says, be alert and be of what? Be of sober mind. Why? Because you and I have someone who is out to get us. Look what Peter says. He says, your enemy, and who's that? He says, the devil, prowls, prowls around like a roaring lion. Now, what is this enemy doing? 
Peter says he's looking for someone to devour. And the devil's always coming after us. That's the reason we got to keep our guard up. It's the reason we got to keep our guard up. The enemy is out to attack us. And with this coronavirus uh, 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 situation starting to, you know, slowly loosen the grip on our country as far as getting back to to life as we kind of knew it, I came across this article which said this. It said this. It said, don't be complacent. Keep your guard up. And then it went on to say this. It said, COVID-19 has a way of sneaking up on those countries that relax too soon. Doesn't that sound a lot like 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, when Peter said, be alert, be of sober mind, watch out for your enemy, that he prowls. In other words, he sneaks up on those who relax, on those who don't keep their guard up. He's sneaking up on us to devour us. I want you to hear the same verse in the message translation. And it says it this way. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, it says, Keep a cool head. Stay alert. The devil is poised to pounce and would like nothing better than to catch you napping. Look at verse 9. What does it say? Type it in right there under the chat. What does it say? Verse 9. Keep your guard up. Keep your guard up. Why did Paul say that God's peace guards our hearts and our minds? Why? Because that's, we have an enemy who is going after that. He goes after our hearts and mind. He targets our minds with his lies. He's going to target your mind and my mind with his lies. His weapon is his lies. He'll tell you and I, man, you're not going to be able to pay the bills. Man, you're not going to be able to pay the mortgage this month. You're not going to be able to make rent. Your marriage is not going to survive this season. You're going to get sick. You're going to be all alone. You're going to be missing somebody. There's going to be a, not going to be a ventilator for you. You're not going to find a job when this is over. The devil is pouncing again and again and again. He's always looking to catch us napping and not keeping our guard up. He targets our mind with his lies. John 8 says he is a liar and the father of all lies. It doesn't matter what the devil says. It's a lie. It's always a lie. It may be couched in a whole lot of truth, but there's just enough that's not truth, which makes it a lie. He twists it just enough to make it a lie. He's always pouncing, so keep your guard up. Keep your guard up. He wants to steal your peace. Keep your guard up. Now, as a pastor, as a leader, I got to tell you, I want to lead strong. I do, and I want to lead with faith, and and I want to believe that God is with us, that God is for us, that God is watching out for us, and that God is taking care of us. But listen, I'll, I'll keep it real here. Man, there's some times right now where I just feel overwhelmed. There really is. I start feeling anxious. I start worrying and and this anxiety starts to get the best of me and I start worrying, how much longer can we do this? How much longer can we take? What's going to happen next? What is life? What is church? What is is our church family going to look like when this is over? And as my brain starts doing that, that's when the enemy comes in and he just starts pouncing and he starts whispering and he starts telling me, you're not going to get through this. You're not going to be able to survive this. I don't think the church can pull this off. I mean, you have a big God, but this is a big problem. I don't think you're going to make it. This is too big. You see, it's all lies. It's all lies. So what do you do? What do I do when the enemy is whispering lies into our ears? What do we do when anxiety grabs a hold of us? We go to God with prayer and we go to God with praise. Whenever the enemy attacks, whenever you feel worried or anxious, keep your guard up. Prayer and praise. Keep your guard up. Prayer and praise. And it's actually kind of interesting when we think about this first idea of of prayer. It's interesting because people will say, I've probably said it myself, well, all I can do now is pray. 
You know, there's nothing else we can really do, so I guess all, we can, all that we have left is that we can pray. Listen, prayer is never a last resort. Prayer's never a last resort. Prayer is always the first line of defense. So let's do it. Let's go to God in prayer. Let's keep our guard up by going to an all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-present, all-sustaining God who with Him nothing is impossible. You know, we just had National Day of Prayer this, this past Thursday, and I hope you participated and that you spent a, a considerable time of the day in prayer. But seriously, church, I want you to think about this. I think God's inviting you and I, every single one of us, to make every single day a national day of prayer. That every day, like that persistent widow in Luke 18, who just comes again and again and again with a relentless type of faith and a relentless type of prayer. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18 says, Pray in the Spirit on all occasions. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, pray without ceasing. You see, we pray and we petition God. God, we need your help. God, move. God, act. God, move and act. God, do what only you can do. That's how we keep our guard up. That's how God's peace guards our hearts and minds. We pray to God. God's peace also guards our hearts and minds when we praise God, when we praise God. Are you following right now on LifePoint social media? I hope you are. If you're not, I really encourage you to jump on. You can see uh, how, to, how to do that right there on, on your screen. I hope you follow. There is a lot of rich content. For example, I love the song that Pastor Trevor, Pastor Derek, and Derek's wife Erin sang this week. It was the song, Let Praise Arise. And I think the words that, 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 that are in that song are so appropriate to the message this morning. Here's a few of the lines. It says this, fear cannot survive when we praise you, God. Now listen to this line. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let praise arise. Keep your guard up. Keep your guard up. How? Praise God. Let the praises rise. And when we do that, God's peace, it guards our hearts and minds from anxiousness and worry and panic and fear. Now, just as a side note, those who were on, did you actually watch to the very end of the song? I hope you did. Seriously, funniest thing I think I've ever seen. I, what I did is I had Cam do a little extra editing of the clip at the end for our Sunday morning uh, pleasure and our Sunday morning viewing experience. For those who didn't see the song, let me kind of set it up for you. So uh, Derek and Aaron and Trevor together at, at Derek and Aaron's house and singing there, and the kids are upstairs. They're little kids, and, and you can imagine parents trying to keep them up there while they're, you know, doing the song down below. And, and, and so as the song's going on and they're getting towards the end, you could tell that the kids are stirring upstairs and they want to come down, and you can see in Derek's face that he starts to freak out a little bit. He's like, oh man, we don't want to retake this. It's hard enough, and, and they've already been doing this for a while, and so they didn't want to do a retake. It was already going well, and so Derek kind of looks at the camera. It's almost like he's looking at Cam going, uh, what do I do here? And then you see Derek actually turn and look up the stairs. I think Ruben's there on the stairs, and he kind of gives this nod like, don't do it. Don't screw this up. We're almost done. And then the song comes towards the end, and the kids come rushing down the stairs as the song is ending. Reuben just can't help himself. And as you listen to this real quick, you just got to listen to Reuben's, Reuben's clever idea of how uh, the reason why he had to come downstairs. Again, so stinking funny. Let's watch this clip. Oh, we praise you. Daddy, there's oh, a in my room. Daddy, there's a spider. Mom's <laughs> in the ball pit and there's a spider. In it? Yeah, there's a shoe. No. No. What are the chances? Man, I, <laughs> isn't that great? I seriously think that clip needs to go viral, or maybe I don't know how it works, if it needs to or what happens, but man, I think I could see that going viral. But Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, remember what Paul said. Rejoice in the Lord. How often? Every once in a while. Occasionally, what do you say? Rejoice in the Lord always. 
always, not just when it's good times, but even in the storms of life. It reminds me of the song we sing, which says, I raise a hallelujah. In other words, I praise God. I praise God, the song says, in the middle of the storm, in the presence of my enemies, louder and louder, God, you are going to hear my praises roar. I love that. God, you're going to hear my praises roar. And then the song says, I raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me. Listen, that is rejoicing in the Lord always, no matter how you feel, that I am raising my praises to God with everything that I have. Psalm 34, verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. Psalm 113, 3, from the rising of the sun until the moment that it sets, let the name of the Lord be praised. I think right now, somebody right now, chat, write it out, type it out, chat, chat it, say it, say amen. Let the name of the Lord be praised. Amen. Let's lift up our praises to Jesus right now. Just type it in there. Praise Jesus. You know, this last week, I spent quite a bit of my prayer time this week uh, uh, just praising God. I I try to do that regularly, but I spent even more time this week simply praising God. Not asking for anything, but praising God. And one of the ways that I've been praising God is for how faithful you have been to God during this season. With your time, with your talents, with your treasure. For example, one of the things I was praising God this week was just for your financial generosity. During this season, I can tell you that as up to this point, LifePoint is financially strong because of your incredible financial generosity to God through LifePoint. In fact, some of you have even said, hey, I want to give more to God during this season. You know, knowing that others aren't able to, and you say, I want to, I want to make sure God's church, LifePoint, is, is still moving forward. And I just praise God for that. That's incredible to think about. I think about others of you. I heard the story of a LifePoint family uh, this last week, and, 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 and you knew someone else in the church was just really, really on a hard times right now, and it's a difficult season for them. And you said, hey, meet me at the store, and they met you at the store, and you pulled out a cart, and you, said, you told that person, fill up the basket. Fill up the basket. And I'm thinking to myself, are you serious? Church, I praise God for you, for that kind of generosity. Some of you have literally dropped cash at our door and said, get this to whoever needs it. Whoever needs it. Man, praise Jesus. Man, we aren't the biggest church, but I think we have the biggest heart of any church. We don't have the most as a church, but I'll tell you this, we give the most. And this church is incredible, and I praise God for that. I praise God. Now listen, don't forget, on our website, there on the top, there's a, there's a spot that says give help, get help. And give help, get help. Man, if you can give help in, in any way, shape, or form, let us know. Whatever that looks like. Driving places, going places, giving, donating, whatever it is. Some of you need some help right now. Fill that out. We want to pair people together. We, wanna, we want people to be connected into meeting needs. But I've just been praising God for how that has been happening. I I could just sit here for the next 10, 15 minutes telling you all these stories I keep hearing of you being incredibly generous to one another during the season. So I praise God for you. I praise God for those of you who in this season have been faithful in other ways. You can't be financially generous right now because you have no job. You have no money. You have no income. And we totally understand that. And and we're praying for you and even want to help you however we can. But listen to this. I I praise God because I keep hearing the stories of some of you who who you say, I'm still going to be generous. I'm going to be generous with my time, with my energy, with my talent. And, And so you're doing that in so many ways. I hear the story of so many of you right now. You're praying. You're praying more than you ever have. You're calling on people and church you're checking on them you're making meals for one another I don't even know how some of you are doing that even when you don't have a job but you're making meals for people you're writing notes to others you're incredible I praise God for you and your generosity you see you might be out of a job right now but you don't have to be out of praise You and I, we can praise God. We can testify to the goodness of God. So, man, right now, right where you're sitting, give God a shout of praise. Type it in. Give God a shout of praise. Thank you, Jesus. You're a good, good God. You provide. You move. You act. We praise you, Jesus. We have so many reasons to rejoice in the Lord always. 
So many reasons to praise God. In fact, right now, why don't you start thinking of some of those? Start typing them into the chat. Seriously, do it right now. Start typing in ways and reasons we have to praise God. You know, I thought of a few that I wrote down. I thought, man, we can rejoice and we can praise God because we have eternal life. We can rejoice and praise God because Jesus has forgiven us of our sins. We can rejoice and praise God because God is our heavenly Father. We can rejoice and praise God because there's absolutely no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We can praise God because we are no longer slaves to sin. We can praise God because we have the Holy Spirit who's in us, who leads us, who guides us, who counsels us, and who fills us with abounding hope. We can praise God because he is our fortress, our helper, our strength, our strong tower, our deliverer. We can praise God because we have unlimited access to his throne, the throne of God. We can praise God because nothing will ever separate us from the love of God. We can praise God because he works in us. And not only does he work in us, he will work all things eventually for good in our lives. We praise God because we will be united with our loved ones one day who believed in Jesus and who had a faith in Jesus. You know, we praise God because one day Jesus will wipe away every tear and all our sorrows and our sadness We can rejoice and praise God because He hears our prayers and He gives us purpose in our lives. And we can praise God because Jesus will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And we can praise God. We can rejoice. We can lift God up. We can worship Almighty God. Why? Ultimately, because one day you and I will gaze upon the face being in the very presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have so much to praise God for. And so we can rejoice. We can praise God for all that he has done. So many reasons to rejoice. So let's rejoice, church. I'll say it again. Let's rejoice. Is it a difficult time? Absolutely, you bet. Are there a lot of problems right now going on that need to be solved? Absolutely. But man, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, remember you're an overcomer by the blood of the the Lamb. Remember, you serve a God who tells us we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. The devil's always coming after us. He's always swinging. He's always pouncing. Keep your guard up. Keep your guard up. The Apostle Paul told us the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard our hearts and minds. How? How? When we keep our guard up, when we keep our guard up, when we pray to God about everything, and we praise God for all things. Keep your guard up this week. Pray about everything. Praise God for all things. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, it'll guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, this is a... a unique chapter, a unique week in, in, in our lives over this last couple months. And we're in this place, God, of, of not knowing. And uh, we've kind of just been hunkered down for two months and now things are starting to change and we're wondering. And, and, and God, there is, there's a sense of an- anxiousness and anxiety and we're not sure what's coming. And we don't want to continue to to hunker down but we don't want to do something that would cause more people to get sick and God our brains just swirl with everything and it's almost like we're watching the news now even if we had uh, stopped watching for the last month or two and we're like okay what's next when can we get out what can we do and God there's just so many questions there's so many what ifs God our circumstances are all over the place and so thank you God today for your message that we don't have to be anxious about anything And so, God, I pray that your church, your family, God, that they would keep their guard up, that they would pray about all things, and, God, that we would praise you in all circumstances. So, Lord Jesus, hear our cries, hear our prayers to you. You know, right where you're sitting or standing or walking or whatever you're working out, whatever you're doing right now, can I encourage you to take a moment, you and Jesus, in your own words, And just go before him and say, Jesus, I don't want to be anxious about anything. 
And I want to trust you that if I keep my guard up, if I pray and I praise you, that your peace is going to guard my heart. I need your peace to guard my heart and my mind. So I come before you today, Jesus, and I commit to you. I am going to pray more. I'm going to praise you more. I'm going to be mindful of it more. And so, Holy Spirit, keep bringing that to my mind every single moment this week, that I pray without ceasing, God, that I come before you in all circumstances, I rejoice. That's my desire, God. Help me to fulfill that. And I pray this in Jesus' name. God, hear each of our prayers. God, we want to be people who glorify you, who worship you, who praise you, Almighty God. We love you. We praise you. We rejoice in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sweet wine, are you heaven? Let the praise go up as the walls come down. All creation, everything with breath, repeat the sound. All this cheer. Thanks for joining us. Have a great Sunday. We'll see you next time. Happy Mother's Day.